Hello, I'm Evelyn O'Rourke and you're listening to the Drive Time Study Hub podcast. Episode 3, English Paper 2. We know that the, there is uncertainty around the academic year and what lies ahead, but help and tips are on the way. Here's Avalon O'Rourke with Study Hub at Drive Time. Thank you so much, Cormac, and you're very welcome here in the Study Hub this evening. Now, I don't know about you, but I do remember when it came to the Leaving Cert papers, one of the most asked questions had to be about English paper two, and the question was always about the poets. Who do you think is coming up? And there'd be hours of predictions of the chances of Heaney versus Plath versus Ivan Boland coming up. So this evening on the the show in just a few short minutes we will dive straight into English paper two and ask our teacher Gavin Kaiser that very question so if you've questions on that or indeed any other element of this vast paper you can text us here now on uh, 51551 and email us at studyhub at rt.ie also on the show tonight, we discussed that elephant in the room, the exams themselves, as more questions are raised about the time frame for the state exams. And tonight we hear from one concerned student who's involved with a new campaign called Student Voice, Student Choice. So while you're chewing on all that, on tonight's poll machine we are asking, does this sound irritate you when you're studying or does it help you along? I feel like I am reaching for my phone, worried it's left on in the studio. But we want to know, do you study with your phone on and is your phone near you now? And if it is, you can text us in Y for yes or N for no. What do you think about phones? 51551. But moving on, in a moment I'll be joined by our teacher Gavin Kaiser as we continue our paper by paper in-depth preview of Leaving Cert 2021. Today's focus, as I said, English paper two, which involves poetry, drama and literature. And this is one part of the syllabus where there are bucket loads of resources available to help you in your study and revision. Take Shakespeare, for example. King Lear is one of the prescribed texts at higher level. And you can catch the 1982 film version starring Brenda Blethyn and Michael Hordern on RT Television next Sunday at 1.25pm. And can I also please recommend Lear in Longford from our colleagues here in Radio Drama. This fantastic series from several years ago explores the play through readings and conversations between students from the Midlands and actor-director Alan Stanford. Here's a taste. Now to read this, we have Erica Elkershi as Lear, Sharon Devine as Cordelia, and Angela Butler as Edmund. Some officers take them away, good guard, until their greater pleasures first be known that are to censure them. We are not the first who with best meaning have incurred the worst. For thee, oppressed king, I am cast down. Myself could else out frown false fortunes frown. Shall we not see these daughters and these sisters? No, no, no. Come, let's away to prison. We two alone will sing like birds in the cage. When thou dost ask me blessing, I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. Lear realises that's where he's at. The Lear at the beginning of the play could never have conceived of doing such a thing. The Lear at the end of the play, having travelled that enormous journey down that enormous staircase to nothingness, realises that the one thing he really must do is beg forgiveness. The voice of Alan Stanford there and what a voice. And you can listen back to Lear in Longford and many other productions which will support your Leaving Cert preparation online at rte.ie forward slash drama on one. Now, let's say hello to Gavin Kowser, the head English teacher at the Dublin Academy of Education. Hi, Gavin. Hi, Evelyn. Thanks so much for inviting me on. Well, Gavin, I don't envy you your task over the next few minutes, which is to try and plough through paper two for us, because can you start, I suppose, you know, at the start by reminding us what exactly does this paper involve? Absolutely. Yeah, no worries at all. And just it's so funny, you know, that we have a, a fantastic reading of King Lear there and we just, you know, who would have thought 400 years after the fact we'd have a, you know, a narcissistic megalomaniac who refuses to give up power and have it so prevalent in terms of today's society. So I just think that's interesting. But um, Shakespeare yeah, yet again getting it right is what you're saying. This is it, the Nostradamus, absolutely. So, um, yeah, absolutely, Evelyn. So basically, paper two is, is composed of four different sections. So we have, as, as we were chatting about there, King Lear is our single text, which is the single text for the, uh, the majority of our candidates. And that's worth 15% of our entire grades. Um, what a lot of students don't know is that there are only really ever four types of questions that crop up for that task, which is character, relationship, style and theme. So it's a really, really good start for our, our 2021ers, you know, to really put a bit of effort into those four areas. 
uh, and that'll definitely go a very long way in terms of sorting them out going forward. Um, the second area in terms of our exams is the comparative, which is 17.5%. And this is, you know, as a gentle rule of thumb with, with paper two, it's, it's one minute in terms of your time management. It's one minute per mark. So this, this is an area where we're going to spend around 70 minutes on. And, it's, and it gives us an opportunity to be really kind of critical and look at the different mediums and the different types of, of literature that were afforded within six years. So we personally are, are kind of looking at um, Brooklyn and the amazing film with Sir Sharon and Never Let Me Go and Philadelphia Here I Come by Friel. Um, I also think it's good for our students to recognise this year, Evelyn, that all three modes of comparison are going to be on the paper. So there's a few little subtle changes to the Leaving Cert this year, which we, we need to be cognizant of. Um, all three modes are going to be on the paper in terms of your comparative, which means we can cut out one, potentially two, in terms of our smart revision. And then in terms of moving on to study poetry, which we know, like even from the time we sat the exams, is always the area that has that fear and trepidation associated with it. But this year, it's a, again, this 12.5% that's going for our study of poetry is a little bit easier because we're given all we're given five poets out of the potential eight uh, from our course. So again, that's going to be there, and 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 that's something to be mindful of as well. And the, and the final part of our of our paper two overview is unseen poetry, which is often overlooked. You know, it's it's kind of obviously the little brother of stupid poetry in the sense that it's five percent, twenty marks. But a lot of students just amalgamate the time that they would have and would give for that section, which is around 22 to 25 minutes. I know it's a little bit of an outlier in terms of that gentle rule of thumb we spoke about before, um, but it's so, so easy to get marks within our unseen poetry task. It is really about, uh, the, the, I suppose, the structure and the style of poetry. We, we have a kind of fortunate or unfortunate acronym in our place called Pattern, Imagery, Sensuousness, and Suggestiveness, which, which comes, you know, P-I-S-S, -S, comes directly from the Department Marking Scheme. And again, once our students try and look for that in our unseen poetry and try and respond to that, because that's what paper two is all about, Evelyn. It's actually responding in terms of your thoughts, your feelings and your opinion. I think what's interesting is the point that you make that there, you know, people have to be aware of these little concessions because that's a thread right through so many of the papers this year. You know, they're trying to liberate certain areas and trying to give students a bit of a hand. So in your case, you're saying don't dismiss unseen poetry, even though that might have been something that people would have done before. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really, really good point. Don't dismiss unseen poetry. Be mindful of the fact that, you know, you don't need to study all three modes of comparison. Be mindful that you don't need to study all eight poets. You know, really compartmentalise your efforts. Be very mindful in terms of your percentage breakdowns. But Where Gavin, you know, <laughs> like I was saying earlier, like the big question every year is, you know, well, who's coming up? Who's coming up? I yeah, saw a yeah. guy today had gone back over the last 10 years, you know, identifying which poets had come up and why. Like, it's hilarious, but it's very st serious for people because there's so much to cover with each poet. What's your yeah. own view when students start by saying, who can I leave out? What can I leave out? Because they're always trying to predict the trends. You know, Bolin came up, Heaney came up, that won't happen again yeah. or whatever. Absolutely. Or there's always a female poet or there's yeah, always an there's Irish a belief poet or that. someone yeah, yeah. dies. Absolutely. No, I, I think what, what's important to note, Evelyn, straight off the bat is that it is worth 12.5% and yet it does get this undue pressure on it. Now, having said that, <laughs> I, I, over on the Dublin Academy, uh, you, you know, th there's a full free 75-minute session on poetry if people want to check it out and there's a sample of our notes there to try and help a little bit. But I think the idea is like, look, we, can, we might be able to talk about predictions a little bit closer to the time, but it's about studying who you find that you can relate to, mm. who you find, I suppose, the easiest to tackle. Yes. Like for me personally, I love Platt, I love Durkin, you know, I love Bishop and Boland. These are phenomenal poets. So what I do is I try and implement that then with my students. Okay. If, I can, if I can get one person enjoying poetry, I think it's, it's probably a win, you know. Now, what are the exams um, markers looking for in English paper two? You know, how different is it to the demands of paper one, do you think? Well, I think a, a lot of the same kind of material it, it very much goes across both papers. You know, you look at paper one and it's all about topic sentences, you know, uh, correct arguments, qualifying your response, little mini conclusions. But no, definitely considering we're talking about paper two, um, our marking scheme is always going to be PCLM, which is Purpose, Cohesion, Language and Mechanics. 
And that percentage breakdown, which never changes, is 30%, 30%, 30%, 10%. So I think it's valid for, for the students listening, you know, not to get head up on grammar and spelling mistakes and things like that, because they are very much, it's 10%. It's 10% percent compared to exactly. getting on with your argument and your persuasive language and making sure that it's clear. They want clarity. Exactly, Evelyn. And even that purpose mark, that purpose mark is going to be the highest mark you receive. So even if you've got superlatives, you know, you've got like amazing um, vocabulary and your vernacular is on point, like that language 30% will not end up being higher than your purpose mark. So it's very important that we answer the question, return to the language of the question, the specific buzzwords that are in there insofar as possible. Put in synonyms. Yes. You know what I mean? Show off. This is this is an exercise in showing off at the end of the day, you know, as, as both English paper one one and paper two are. So yeah, return to the language of the question and really make make strong confidence statements in yourself, you know, back up your opinion. Because again, this is something that is often, you know, uh, forgotten about. As long as you make a point and you can qualify it either with a key moment in Lear or your comparative or some element of a quotation in your poetry, you have to be rewarded for that. I remember there was a view, you know, you should get the marker's attention, you know. So if you say, as you say there, you make a bold statement, that's, you know, that's going to grab a little bit of attention, but be able to qualify it. You can't just throw down the stuff it's got to got to have supporting theory around it's it. Got to stick. Absolutely. There's a you know there's a phenomenal essay that I, I read a number of years ago, and one of the students you know started off a Sylvia Plath essay, not necessarily by diving into the language of the question, but actually starting with a quote, and it was a quote from Sylvia Plath's diary, and it was Sylvia Plath once wrote, "I am myself. That is not enough." So often when we experience and engage with her work, we're plagued. Uh, we're, we experience a speaker who's plagued by insecurity. And you just think as an examiner straight away, you're like, that's it. That's yeah. what I want. You know, there's an interest here. The students showing off their ability. And that it looks like, it certainly looks like, Evelyn, that they care, you know, that they care about the poet. Now, tell me, you know, your basic tips and tricks for this paper. It all comes down to time management. And I know you, the word ruthless will emerge in a minute. But, you know, people have to be so careful. Can you give us your tips, your rule of thumb for how people should approach the time management of this paper? Because it can be overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely can. And again, it, it always falls back on this compartmentalization and playing to your strengths. I think if you're really, really good at poetry and we recognize that we've, because poetry is a 50 mark question, we have 50 minutes for that task. I think we start with, you know, really put our best foot forward straight away because it'll breed confidence. You know, if you start like throwing down like your topic sentences and really clever little one-liners about responding to Sylvia Platt's work and talking about juxtapositions or superlatives, as I've mentioned before, or, you know, like oxymoronic statements. If you start off with that, you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm actually really good at English. And then what happens is the latter tasks become slightly easier. You know, you recognize, as you said, you used the word a second ago, ruthless. You know, you get to 50, 55 minutes on your study poetry and you know for a fact that by starting a new question, by spending 10 to 15 minutes on the next question, you're going to significantly improve your grade. Okay, so again, by remaining on a question, you're actually doing more damage to your paper than good. And your opinion is so important. I mean, lots of I felt this, lots of, you know, we as readers believe you really, really want to urge that. Massively. And then what we can do is we can either we we can even kind of evolve that. So you're everything you said is absolutely correct there. You know, I felt this. I thought that. But go global with it. You know, make definite statements that are still your opinion. You know, we as readers believe this or it is obvious to see, you know, that Sylvia Platt's use of sensuous language obviously makes this, you know, a harrowing vignette from her life. That kind of terminology, those like those dynamic global statements will will still come across. Like, don't think, oh, I haven't used I in six to eight sentences. Don't worry. Examiners will pick up on the global statements and, and if anything, reward you for them. OK, Gavin, thank you so much. Now, you are going to stay on the line, as they say, because we're getting questions in for you and there's so much more to discuss. So we'll come back to you before the end of the show, if that's all right. Put on the yeah, kettle there. Great. So just invite listeners who are listening in, maybe uh, something that Gavin there has said has struck a chord. You can text us in on 51551 and we can put those questions to Gavin in a couple of minutes. But here on the Study Hub, as we've said already this evening, we're all about recommendations of different resources that you might choose to help guide your study and exam preparation. And there's a huge amount of information, advice and videos over on rte.ie forward slash learn, which is where you'll find Natasha Mainba and Minahil Safrez, uh, their Leaving Cert tips. And this is how Natasha and Minahil approach Leaving Cert English. In this vid, we're going to be talking about English, which is literally one of my favourite Leaving Cert subjects, um, because I really love poetry. I love rap. I write my own raps and I'm 
obsessed with Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar. Just give me anything rap, which is not something a lot of people expect from a Muslim girl dressed in a headscarf. But hey, deal with it. So for most people sitting the leaving cert, English paper one is the first paper and it's a pretty good one. I love William Butler Yeats and his poetry, especially The Clots of Heaven. My favorite quote is, tread softly because you tread on my dreams. It reminds me of how fragile our dreams are. I remember when I first came to Ireland when I was 10 and I went to school, my teacher thought I couldn't speak English. She thought I was illiterate, even though English is the main language in Zimbabwe. And I guess you can say I ended up being one of the best students in her class. Humble. <laughs> one of the options for the English paper is to do a debate. We both love debating. You get to use your voice and think in a different perspective. My mom fled Zimbabwe because she was a target after standing up for women's rights. She always told me how important it was to voice my opinion and to speak out because for so long, women were told to be quiet. Our goal is to help others who may feel excluded and show them that they are not alone. As UNICEF ambassadors, we've been given the opportunity to use our voices and fight for child refugees. And it's a fight we're determined to continue and to win. And you'll find more of Natasha and Minahill's videos and tips over on rte.ie forward slash learn. At the start of the programme, we were asking, do you leave your phone on when you study? And you can text Y for yes or N for no if that phone is close by. Um, and just to remind you of the sounds of the phones and just see, does this annoy you or does this excite you when you hear this? Well, so far the poll is saying it's literally 50-50. It's very exciting here. One texter got in touch to say that they put their phone on a special mode and only gets important notifications. So does that count? Hmm, we'll have to think about that. Well, now the ongoing questions over when the Leaving Cert will take place and how it will be examined continues to cause concern for students. And as things stand, the Minister for Education, Norma Foley, hopes that sixth years will be back in their classrooms if the virus conditions allow. And she says she's still planning for exams to take place later this year. Deadline for project work have been extended and later this week the department will meet with unions, parents and school managers to discuss the next steps but students are still worried and some of them have organised a new campaign called Student Voice, Student Choice and one of the people involved is Dara Casey a sixth year student from St Mary's CBS in Ennis Corthy County Wexford Hi Dara Hello Now Dara, thank you so much for joining us this evening and as I said, dragging yourself away from your studies to talk to us and you might start by just telling us a little bit about yourself where you're at at the moment in terms of your studies and what your plans are for the future um, Well, I am um, currently none of us are really sure what we're working towards but um, a lot of our coursework was disrupted last year with the 11 weeks that we missed and then again this year missing an unknown amount of time which isn't great but we're all trying to make the best of it at the minute, but um, I suppose we're all leaning towards a choice of predicted grades or not. And um, a lot of people are hoping for them, but we'll have to wait and see. OK, so at the moment, are you studying away, you know, aiming towards that traditional leaving cert as such? Is that is that how you're trying to handle your days? Yeah, so like right now, um, I'm working, you know, working away, doing the online classes and doing work provided by teachers and wor working towards a traditional leaving cert. But I would be v fairly worried now if um, I'd have my course finished in time for most subjects. And the big thing about you students in sixth year is that last year you were interrupted as well. So this is one of the points that you want to make because you're going into your second year of disruption in your lessons and in your learning for a two year course. Yeah, so um, the way that um, my campaign kind of looks at it is, well, last year they missed, yeah, they missed the same amount of time as us, but they missed what mostly revolved around revision, whereas in comparison to us, we missed uh, bulk coursework and 11 weeks of it. And then after, you know, we're into another lockdown now and we don't know how long that's going to take and we're missing projects and coursework yet again. So at this point then, you and your um, colleagues and your friends and peers, you decided to get together to set up this campaign. But tell me how it all came about for you. Um, so we were on a live with Mick Barry, who is um, a TD from Cork. And um, there was multiple group chats with um, lots of students uh, questioning 
the same thing. But um, we kind of congreg- congregated um, as a group, and there's um, there's about 15 of us from about 10 different counties, from Dublin to Kerry to Clare to Wexford to Wicklow, um, all over Ireland. So we kind of just came from uh, one of them meetings. And what uh, you know, what are the aims as such? Because I gather, I think you have five main aims of this campaign. Tell me a little bit more about those. Yeah, so we have five main aims. So the first aim is to get our opinions and emotions um, expressed and heard. So the Minister Norma Foley states that um, she is in contact with students, even though she has blocked um, emails and she's not receiving them from students. She's turned off comments on social media, restricting and neglecting um, students' voices. So then our second aim is um, fighting for fair treatment as students in comparison to last year's students. You know, they, as I said, they missed a revision whereas we miss core coursework and we're missing it again this year. And then we also, some people may have missed time due to being infected by the virus or being close contacts, um, as there's many variants now and they're more effective to our age group than the variant was last year. Um, our third aim is to actually get in contact with our country leaders and um, talk to them on a personal level and express our feelings towards them as people rather than through a screen. Um, Our fourth aim is letting students talk about stress levels to people who are in similar situations. So we've had people contact us regarding, you know, how they're feeling and what they're going through and that, like, we're going through the same and we understand and we're all from different counties. So um, it's not just one county or one area. And then our final and biggest concern really and aim would be is fighting for urge and of a choice and clarity like the stories that we receive regarding people's mental health to be honest they're terrifying and um, unmotivational days are leading our year realistically into a mental downgrade and it's scary to think that it's people of my own age and the same situation as me that are going through these stories and um, you know a a traditional leaving cert is a struggle for anyone and uh, the lack of social interaction could be a struggle for anyone but the two of these combined together with a lack of clarity and a lot of core coursework missed. Um, I think it's a big thing like for our year to be all taken at such a young age. OK, well, look, I suppose there's so much kind of noise around this and, you know, there's so many platforms as all the different ways that people can contact. Um, I'm sure Minister Foley would say that she's well aware of the concerns of the students, that, you know, that they're very actively engaged in this process. So can I just end, though, by asking you for clarity? You want both. You want the choice of calculated grades and the traditional leaving cert. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I would say it's fair to give us a choice. Last year, seek the choice, and uh, in our opinion, then they didn't miss um, as much bulk coursework um, as us, and they received a fair and uh, accommodation. So the choice is what you'd like to have at this point, yeah, and clarity on it all. Yeah, because I understand that not everyone wants to predict the grades and not everyone wants the traditional even start. So that's the fairest way to um, accommodate everyone. Well, look, Dara, good luck in your campaign and in your studies. And thank you so much for taking our call today. And just to say, Dara, you know, the, the issues you raised there about support and mental health, for example, this is really something that's on our mind too. And we'll be um, discussing mental health support in more detail on the show. But again, we'd love to hear from you. Studyhub at rt.ie if you want to email us in with your concerns or your thoughts around all this. And um, we would, uh, you can also text us in on 51551. But we are now going back to Gavin Kaiser. Uh, we said we'd get some questions into Gavin that we've got in this evening for English Great, Paper yeah. 2. So if you're ready to go, as they say, it's like the mastermind round. What is as the long best- as Evelyn, no one's asking me to do to any raps or things like that. Just <laughs> such great confidence from those kids there. I wouldn't be ready for that. <laughs> no, let's hold off on that for the moment. Listen, <laughs> Gavin, quickly, what do you think is the best way to finish an answer? Somebody says here, I always struggle with closing paragraphs. Should I just sum up what I said? Yeah, it's a really good question. And introductions and conclusions are so important. You know, you really have to start with your best foot forward with that hook, you know, that thesis, really having a good solid rule of three, you know, mentioning three things in quick succession, you know, telling the examiner points you want to talk about. But in terms of the question that's asked there, in terms of the conclusion, is that you're returning to that. Remember, gone are the days of the kind of the over bloated conclusions, you know, that are half an A4 page to three quarters of an A4 page, you know, literally rehashing over literally everything you've just said. We're not looking for that anymore. We're looking for a return to the thesis. This is the last chance that you have to prove your point and prove that you have, you know, qualified your opinions, thus proving your argument. So let's get back to our thesis 
if you did start off with a rule of three, no harm to tell the examiner, look, you know, I said I was going to start out with X, Y, and Z, and clearly I've mastered those areas. We don't want any new points, no new quotes. The only quote you should be using is, I know we had a little chat about the hook, you know, and the potential for usage of a hook at the start. That's the only quote you go back to in your conclusion, all right? So the conclusion is to wrap it up nice and quickly and just say, yeah, look, I have, I have given you everything you've looked for today. And to wrap ourselves nice and quickly, another quick question. Should I summarise a player poem in my answer to fill it out a bit? So summary, Evelyn, is, is the equivalent of the F word in terms of English, okay? The only time we're using summary, or as the way that that student puts it, is again to qualify your response. If they're talking about a single text or they're talking about a play, you're going to give context, yes. But remember, it's not like a summary. Like we, like the examiners, the teachers, we've read the play. We know what's going on. We want to give a little bit of context and say, look, we're talking about act three, scene two here. It's one of the most seminal moments in terms of the storm scene. It's, you know, we get our pathetic fallacy here and then you get into the bones of why indeed you have selected that moment. Okay, so we want to avoid summary insofar as possible. And what we want to do is actually just use the information, I suppose, to, to our benefit and for our, our reward. OK, well, for our reward too, thank you so much, Gavin Kyles, the head English teacher at the Dublin Academy of Education. We'll have you back, I'm sure, again, Gavin. But you've brought this instalment of the Study Hub to a close and we'll be back here on Drive Time from 6.30pm on Thursday. Matt's paper one will be under the spotlight. So get your questions into us now and just let you know the poll is still at 50-50 about whether or not you have your phone close beside you when you're studying. But for now, uh, yes, you can email us on this, on English, paper, uh, English papers, we'll come back to that, or indeed on Matt's paper one for Thursday night, or indeed on any other exam topic at studyhub at rte.ie Thank you for listening to the Drive Time Study Hub podcast. If you want more resources to support your learning from home, check out rte.ie forward slash learn.